when it comes to data privacy and security, um, one key thing is that you have to look at it uh, holistically. It's not enough just to say, okay, we have our ducks in a row. Uh, but the way I like to put this kind of to simplify it is you have to look at data privacy as like a puzzle where each player is a piece of the puzzle. So you have to look at your entire supply chain from your who's supplying any goods and services to you, any subcontractors, vendors, <clears throat> any kind of third party, third party agreements that you have with other entities. Those also have to be considered in whether or not they have the proper policies and practices in place. That is very important. Generally, when we look at it, from a bird's eye view, there's three approaches that we see right now to privacy laws and regulations. There are your harm-based regulations, there are your rights-based regulations, and then you also have your rights-based regulations in rights-denying regimes. And these are, number three is kind of your more most aggressive form of uh, data privacy uh, that, we'll, that we'll cover today. So first, let's talk about the harm the harms-based approach, it's just as it suggests, we look at the harm and we build the regulations based upon the potential harms. And as you see on the slide, the, essentially the approach is that regulation is important, but it must be balanced <clears throat> against the potential harms and consequences to consumers and to the public. So we see this particular approach in a lot of United States laws. On the second, approach, the rights-based approach. Uh, this is where effectively rights are given to individuals or entities, and then the regulations are drafted around those rights. So stark contrast and the harm-based harm -based approach where we first see, okay, you know, is there a harm? Where's the foul? Okay, we need to draw the line now that we know, you know, where the foul and where the harm comes from. The rights-based approach actually first provides rights to individuals, and then it requires regulations that are in compliance with those particular rights. Lastly, we have um, the rights-based regulations in rights-denying regimes. And so this is, we effectively have one big example of this, kind of the two-headed monster approach where in one hand, you're weaponizing privacy rights against businesses. <clears throat> but also providing some leniency towards others, towards the government or other, the entities that are actually denying certain privacy rights. So China's personal information protection law, which went into effect in 2021, is an example of this. And just to give you a little summary on this law, effectively it's a sweeping law um, that went into effect in 2021 and it applies to private businesses and what they can share. And I don't think this surprises anyone in China, you know, issues with free speech. Um, this law goes into place in order to, uh, for the government to effectively control what can be shared, what information can be shared, and what can't be shared. What's interesting about this is that it uh, does not limit the government, but it has more severe penalties for those private entities that violate those particular laws.